In this video, we're going to look at a very interesting and useful function that's related to the conservation of mass equation. That function is called the stream function. Let's review the velocity field that we looked at in the velocity fields and conservation of mass video. There we had a velocity where the u component of the velocity was 2x and the y component of the velocity was minus 2y. And we had solved for that minus 2y to ensure that conservation of mass was enforced. And this was the resulting velocity field that we saw. That conservation of mass for two-dimensional uh, incompressible flow is du dx plus dv dy is equal to zero. And we're going to use that in order to come up with something called the stream function. So let's define a function, psi, our stream function, such that the u component of the velocity is obtained by taking the derivative of this function with respect to y. And the v component of the velocity is obtained by taking the negative of the derivative of this function with respect to x. Why would we do that? Well, let's substitute that into the conservation of mass equation. We have an expression for u. We need to take the derivative of u with respect to x in our conservation of mass equation. And we need to take the derivative of v with respect to y in our conservation of mass equation. So if we substitute that into conservation of mass, in so doing, what we get is the second derivative of psi with respect to x and y, with respect to x and y, minus, because of this minus, the second derivative of psi with respect to x and y, which of course, those are identical terms, that is a definition of zero, and conservation of mass requires that those two velocity components are equal to zero. And so if we take this definition of psi, it guarantees that conservation of mass is satisfied. But that is not all. Oh no, that is not all. Let's look at what else we can do with this stream function. Let's do this by looking at an example of calculating the stream function. So let's take the same velocity field that we saw in the previous slide and that we saw in the um, previous video. V is equal to u is equal to 2x and v is equal to minus 2y. Let's begin with the u component. In defining the stream function, we said that the derivative of the stream function, psi, with respect to y, is defined as that u component. In this case, that's 2x. Well, now we can integrate this and solve for psi from this expression. d psi is equal to u dy. Our u is 2x, so that's 2x dy. And notice that d psi is equal to a u velocity component times a dy, the, co the coordinate direction that's perpendicular to u. This is going to evaluate to the units of and be a volume flow rate through a surface with an x normal direction. Right? The u component carries it through uh, that surface, and this will be a volume flow rate, a u times an area unit depth into the screen. So this is going to be related to the volume flows. When we carry out that integration, of course, we get 2xy, we're integrating with respect to y, and we could have some arbitrary function of x alone that would go to zero when we took the derivative with respect to y. So there could be some function of x there, so we'll leave it there. Now, let's continue with v. The definition of v is our stream function, taking the derivative with respect to x, is the definition of the negative of the v component of the velocity, where the negative of our v component of the velocity is 2y. Again, we can do the same rearrangement, and notice again, now we have the v component of the velocity, and we're integrating with respect to x, which would have a normal in the same direction as the v. So again, we're talking about a volume flow rate through a surface, uh, and this will again have units of volume flow and will be related to volume flow rates. We can carry out that integration again. When I integrate 2y with respect to x, I again get 2xy. And now I could have had an arbitrary function of y, and of course in either case I could have had a constant. I didn't need to put the constant here because it would just add to whatever constant I had here, and we'd still get a constant. And now I compare these two expressions, and I see that in this expression I have a 2xy, and I could have some function of x. When I look at the second expression I got, I have a 2xy, which of course has a function of x, and I could have had a function of y. Seeing as I don't have any pure function of x or y in either of my expressions, they aren't there in this example, and my value of psi, when I choose a value of constant of zero, we could do that from the boundary conditions if we want to know the absolute value of the stream function, or we can arbitrarily choose it, and we'll see, show you why in a moment. 
but psi in this case then, with a c chosen as 0, is equal to 2xy. Here I plotted the velocity vectors that we saw before, and I plotted contours of the stream function. And what do you notice about these contours of the stream function? These contours are everywhere tangent to the velocity vector. Contours of the stream function are streamlines, and that shouldn't at all be surprising. In this flow, it was very reasonable to choose a constant of zero. There is no flow through this surface because all of these velocity vectors are parallel to this surface, and there's no flow through this surface, so there's no flow through this surface. That means that if I go from here to here and I integrate the mass flows, I'm starting from zero. There is no flow coming in here. Same thing here. But remember what this function was doing. I integrated u dy to get the value of my stream function. That's integrating the volume flow rate. So what the value of this contour line is, is the value of the volume flow rate going from this point where it's zero, where we chose the constant zero, to this point. And so the value of the stream function shows you a value of volume flow rate. Now, that's interesting in itself, but if I went up to this streamline, I would, of course, get a higher flow. I've integrated the flow all the way up to this point. This will have a higher value. If I put a color scale, you would see that this was a higher value of the stream function. If I take to here, I get the value of this one. That's the volume flow to this point. If I go to here, I get the volume flow rate to this point. If I were to subtract those two, I get the volume flow rate that's passing through these two streamlines. We know that flow can't go through a streamline because a streamline is everywhere tangent to the velocity vector. There's no velocity component normal to the surface. And so the flow rate between any two streamlines is fixed. And we can get what that is by subtracting the two values of these contours. In fact, I could take two points anywhere in this flow and if I knew the value of the stream function, subtracting the stream function here from the stream function here will give me the volume flow rate passing through this surface. That makes it incredibly useful. It's incredibly useful because we can calculate those flow rates, but it also gives us the, the streamlines in the flow, and we can clearly see lots of information about this flow now. We can see, knowing that the volume flow rate is constant between these two streamlines, that this, the flow is decelerating as we go here. The area is getting larger here than it was here, and so the flow has got a slower velocity here than it had here, and it speeds up again. And likewise, we can see the velocity is higher here. These two streamlines are closer together than these two. And that's the stream function, a very, very useful tool in fluid mechanics for two-dimensional flows.